Good morning ladies and gentlemen, my name is Haley Jackson and today I wanted to share some tips and tricks with you as to how I go about breaking down a script. So I know that it can be extremely intimidating, especially if you just got cast in a play or even if it's just a scene. You've got so many lines, you've got blocking you have to remember, and then let alone getting into character and figuring out who your character is. So today I just wanted to share with you kind of like a part one, the very basics of breaking down a script and the first couple steps I take when I first am handed a script. So obviously every script is going to be entirely different. Breaking down Shakespeare versus breaking down a short form film script are two very different things. Today I wanted to break down um, a very short script that I'm doing for an acting class that I was just handed a couple of days ago. Um, a pretty obvious one, I like to highlight all of my lines. This just helps you stand out on the page, um, you can see right away where it is that you speak. Secondly, and something that I know a lot of people don't do, especially when they're starting out, but is just as important as highlighting your own lines, is highlighting your cue lines. So this script that I've got here today is very simple, it's very short lines of dialogue and there's only two characters so I don't feel it necessary to highlight my cue lines because every line that isn't my line is a cue line. However, I've been in some really dynamic dialogue scenes, especially in Shakespeare, um, scenes like A Midsummer Night's Dream. I got to play Hermia in A Midsummer Night's Dream and there's some really frantic, energetic, crazy scenes um, where everybody's kind of talking at once so it's extremely important important to memorize your cue lines just as much as you're memorizing your own lines because you have to be able to jump on the ball of when you speak, when, why you say it, who you're saying it to. The next thing I identify is how I am going into the scene. Where was I just now? What state of mind am I in? What emotions had I just been feeling? And um, why am I entering this scene? And that question of why is both physical and emotional. One of the first things you need to identify, which sometimes can be very difficult, is to figure out your why. What is your intention with this scene? No good writer is ever going to write a character to be somewhere just because. Now bad writers on the other hand might be, so definitely look out for that. But say you're breaking up a Shakespeare play, you're never going to be a character just standing there and not contributing anything. So in this scene, like I said, I was just handed the scene and I've actually only read it over twice so far. So another thing that I highly recommend is First, to just go through and read it five to ten times because you really need to get familiar with it and you might be asking questions that are already in the script. However, sometimes it kind of leaves you with a lot of questions, like this one. It never tells you in the blocking or anything where they are, what the setting is, how they're entering the scene. Um, this is a scene from a movie and whenever I do scenes from movies, I'm one of those actors who don't actually like to go and watch the, the scene from the movie. I would rather do it myself and then usually I'll go watch it after I've performed the scene. Some actors love to go and watch that movie scene and see how the other actor did it or if it's a famous script, a famous play that's been adapted multiple times, they'll go watch a plethora of different versions which is great. Um, but depending on the role, especially for me if I'm doing a movie scene, I feel like I don't want to go watch how another actor did it because I might try and mimic them or do the performance that they did and I would rather give my own raw version of whatever it is that I'm playing. So top of this script, um, you see that there's no setting. I'm not really sure where I'm coming from, what I'm doing. What I can gather is that it's morning. My first line is, well, good morning. What else I can gather throughout the script is that these two are obviously very, very good friends. So it's very important to find an intentionality at the top of the scene as to why you're there and what you are doing. It doesn't have to be some great thing. You don't have to be entering to win the love of your life or to murder somebody or to um, rob a bank. For me, I think at the top of this scene, all I'm doing is my morning routine. I'm getting up, I'm getting ready, I'm starting my day, and that is a good enough reason in itself. Um, next, like I just kind of did, it's important to identify the relationships you have with all the other characters in the scene. So in this scene, it's just me and my good friend. Obviously, I gather throughout the script that we are very close, and I care about this person very much. I also gather that she's a little bit dangerous, and she might not be in the best place in her life. Now that 
that has a very serious effect on um, how we're going to interact because if I'm worried about her that changes a whole friendship interaction as opposed to one that's just more fun and upbeat. So from the get-go I can tell that my character is worried about her, worried about the state of life that she's in and she's trying to help her. So something else to identify is the fact that what you want or what you need can change throughout the scene. Um, so I go from just starting off on my morning routine but if that's all the scene was it would be very boring. Nobody, it's very rare that in a script you sit and you watch somebody make coffee and pour it and drink it and make breakfast and eat it. Like that's just not a very interesting dynamic scene and you're also not really pushing a story forward. So what happens is as that starts off as my first goal is to go about my morning routine and as soon as Evie comes in I um, want to help her and that becomes my overall objective is helping my friend. Um, now this is seen in multiple areas because it turns out that she had just been beaten by some guy before so I'm doing everything I can. I'm trying to clean her wounds, I'm trying to give her an ice pack, I'm trying to give her advice, I'm trying to find out why she was around this man and overall just tell her to be smarter and tell her that I'm here for her and that she's being dumb and she needs to be making better life decisions. So identify what your want is coming into the scene and then if it changes, also identify where that change happens and which one is more important. Are you trying to save a life at the beginning of the scene and then you're trying to make coffee because that's usually not how things go. The next thing that will change is probably your tactics. Playing a character that's only doing one tactic to get what they want is again not a very interesting character and probably not a very smart character. Throughout the scene I'm trying to to help her and we see that in a lot of different colors first we see it in a very kind way she's being very sympathetic empathetic she's asking her a lot of questions she's trying to give her an ice pack and then more toward the end of the script she, my character actually yells at the other character and gets really snappy with her basically telling her that she needs to shape up and change her life and stop making these really ridiculous decisions that's putting her in these dangerous situations. The end of the scene kind of breathes a little bit more again. We go back to maybe joking a little bit but both of us have changed at that point. While addressing the different relationships in a scene, something that I learned in acting school that I found extremely valuable is figuring out what the like stereotype relationship are between you and that other character and again that's something that can change multiple times as your tactics change throughout the scene so what do I mean by these stereotypical relationship changes so the actual literal relationship that we have is friends but throughout the scene I would argue that our relationship kind of turns into parent child because I am trying to help her um, and how that relationship changes also goes from loving parent to upset child or loving parent to kind of sassy child as uh, the, uh, the other character is very sassy in the beginning of the scene which then changes to scolding caring parent to, to maybe like rebellious teenager um, because the conversation kind of turns into a harsher tone and I take on the role of trying to parent her and give her advice and maybe that's because of our age difference. I'm about 15 years older than her, maybe 10 years older than her. So other examples of kind of stereotypical relationships might be boss to employee and then how that interaction goes might be like understanding boss to struggling employee or um, ruthless boss to struggling employee, something like that. Maybe it's sister to sister, you don't actually, the characters don't actually have to be related to have that sort of emotional connection. It might be loving older sister to ignorant younger sister. It might be harsh older brother to emotional younger brother. There's all sorts of different dynamics that you can put you can address within the scene because it just kind of helps you in your approach to how you're talking to them. What is it that you're trying to do to them? Are you trying to coach them? Are you trying to help them? Are you trying to give them advice? Are you looking up to them? There's a million different dynamics that you could list, um, but I've found that identifying those sort of stereotypical relationships can be very helpful. The next thing that I like to do to go along with 
actions and what it is that you're trying to do, identify your action with every single line that you have. And the actions can be extremely similar, but they should be different with every line. No, again, no well-written character is going to say something just because. Every line of dialogue should be moving the story and the character forward. So why is it that you're saying the line that you're saying? It should be for some significance. So there's this great book, it's a textbook, and all it is is a list of verbs. It's a list of um, actions that you can be taking with that line. And I love this because you know the meaning of a very specific action. Say you're trying to punch somebody with this line. Say you're trying to slap somebody with a line. Say you're trying to hug somebody with a line. Rather than it just being words, you're driving some inner need with every word that you're saying and that is super helpful. And then by changing that action word for every single line that you have, you're not gonna just stay static. You're not gonna just stay trying to hurt them for every line or trying to um, pat them on the head with every line. Because again, that's going to get boring. That are life changing. You know, we watch these days, we watch these stories that change this character's life. So it's not just gonna be an average thing. So you wanna really change it up a lot and use a lot of different colors throughout your scene. That way it's interesting. You're able to tell a story in a more dynamic way. So um, I'm gonna put a link down in the description below to get that book. I highly recommend it. It's been a significant tool to me in breaking down scenes. So the next thing to identify along with actions is um, do you get what you want in the scene? So by the end you and your the other character have probably changed in some way so it's important to identify that change, that inner change, maybe the outer change. And even if that's literally just an emotional change do they go into the scene happy, leave angry? And by the way they should. They should have an emotional difference at the beginning of the scene than they do at the end. Again, otherwise that might just be bad writing. <laughs> Um, not to insult anybody, but if you're just watching a character be angry from the beginning to the end um, There's not really a lot of point to the scene. We want to be seeing these characters change How do you change from the beginning of the scene emotionally physically if there's physical changes? Spiritually whatever um, and do you get what you want whatever that thing is at the top of the scene that you go in trying to get or achieve? Um, do you have it by the ending and if you do or you do not how does that affect your character? character after that scene. Characters, if you're doing a whole play, I mean a character is going to go on for the entirety of the play, but regardless of whether you're just doing a scene, an entire play, a film, whatever it may be, your character goes on after that last page. So you need to identify how it is that your character changed and whether or not they accomplished what they were trying to accomplish. So you also need to identify why the character enters the scene and why the character exits the scene. Now sometimes it's as simple as the stage directions say black out. So maybe it feels like a scene ends kind of in the middle. Shakespeare is famous for having scenes start and end just kind of in the middle. Like they're already yelling at each other. You always need to identify a very specific reason as to why you're entering and why you're exiting. Again, this script itself is a very modern script. It's very easy to understand and very straightforward, but something extremely essential is to always understand exactly what it is you're saying and why you're saying it. If it's in a certain type of slang, if it's Shakespeare, if it's even in a different language, whatever it may be, if there are words you don't understand or you don't understand why you're saying a certain line, you need to look into that and do your research. The audience is not going to understand your character if you don't understand your character. One of my greatest pet peeves is when people come to rehearsal and say they don't know what a word means. That's research that you need to do on your own. Um, you need to be looking up every word, you need to understand every word and why you're saying it, why you're using that specific word, because that's important. You as a human person would never just throw out words randomly without any int intentionality behind it or understanding of what the word means. Even if you're mistaken and you use the wrong word, um, you think you have a meaning behind it and you put that meaning 
meaning into the word when you say it. So just like your character, they mean everything that they say and they use words. Their vocabulary is made up of words that they think are going to be the best words to accomplish their goal or their need. So be sure you really know your stuff. Don't be that person asking the director, asking the writer in rehearsal what a word means. I think, I think it's perfectly acceptable to be asking a director or a writer why you say something or what your intention is behind it. Sometimes you need that extra help, but at the very least you need to understand the literal definition of every word that you're saying and um, how people use it. As you're getting to know your character, you put together the puzzle pieces like a detective. A script is going to help you develop your character based off of three things. What it is that you say about your character, what do other people say about your character, and what does the writer say about the, your character. I literally go through and I underline those things in with pen um, so that they really stand out and I will sometimes write them down on like a character list. As I'm developing my character, it's just very important to remember those things. So uh, again, what a writer says about your character is probably gonna be true because if it's in the narration, if it's in the description of your character, that's how the writer wrote your character. So it's, it's true. Now what you say about your character and what other people say about your character may or may not be true, but the fact that they're saying it has some effect on your character. So if somebody says uh, so and so has anger issues, so and so won a gold medal, so and so um, fell down a flight of stairs. Is that true? And how does that affect your character? As well as what do you yourself say about yourself? If you come into a scene and say, I'm tired, if you come into a scene and say, I feel sick, I'm pregnant, I am mad at you, um, identify whether those things are true and why you're saying them. Um, and again, how that affects or builds your character within a scene. So there you go guys, that's the very, very basic minimum work I do to start breaking down a scene. Then after that, obviously I can go into memorization and building a character and all of that, and all of that comes way later. This was just to help you when you get a script put in your hand, how is it that you originally start to break it down, what questions are you asking, and um, where do you start out? So hopefully this was helpful, best of luck to you, and I hope that you can put on some killer performances. Please throw those questions or comments down in the comments below because I would love to find out what it is you need. I paid a lot of money for acting school and I know that a lot of people don't have that opportunity so I would love to share all of that knowledge with you for free um, and help you get along in your acting career. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this, hit the like button, share with people you think could use it and I will see you in my next video.